Howdy, Possum Patty here, and I'm working on my fern page. But first, I'm going to take a little walk in the woods, so why don't you come on along? Howdy, Possum Patty here. Today is May 2nd, and we're going to take a little fern walk because the fiddleheads are just starting to unfurl. And here's some right here at the edge of the woods. And these look like hay scented ferns. And they're opening up. They'll get much bigger. Let me get down on the ground here. There's a little tiny one here, still all coiled up. And these, these are a little bit bigger here. These are hay scented ferns. And they're coming up everywhere. And right behind them is one of my favorite, the royal fern. Of course, the royal fern has purplish stems because purple is the color for royalty. And here's the fiddlehead way up here. And the purple stem. And here's some little tiny ones just coming up. And there's a patch of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, about fifteen clumps right here. And they'll get pretty big. But these are the royal fern. Take a little walk back here in the clearing. And there's a couple of different ferns back here. Now this is a very large fern. And it's very fuzzy. And this is one of the Osmundas. This is either going to be a cinnamon fern or a interrupted fern. Because there's a couple different kind in that family. Oh, look down here. Little tiny fill heads just coming up. Look how different, look how small and smooth these are compared to how large and fuzzy these are. All kinds of ferns. Now this is a different fern. This is a sensitive fern. And I know that because last year's uh, spores are still here. That's what these uh, brown stalks are. So spores for the fern come out of there. And they're just starting to come up out of the ground. Some little tiny, tiny ones in there. Uh, here's one of the sensitive ferns opening up. They're still so tiny. And this is not a fern, but it's very special. It's a primitive plant called a horsetail or mare's tail or scouring rush. Has a couple different names for it. Very primitive. And oh, here's a couple more back here. Little tiny ones and some big ferns. Fuzzy fiddleheads. If you can see all these brown stalks over here, these are all going to be uh, sensitive ferns coming up in this area. Well, so far I've only found one picture for the ferns that we saw in the woods, and that's the hay scented fern. And I just made a little journaling card, Fern Walk, and this was on May 2nd, hay scented ferns. And then these three are the Osmunda ferns, the royal, the cinnamon, and the interrupted, and then the sensitive ferns. And I found a little picture of the horsetails, and I'm working on this journaling card right now. So I'm just going to add a little tag across the top, and I'm using this really beautiful batik material that I got at a yard sale the other day, and I've just left some on my desk. And I'm not saving it for anything special. I'm just going to put it out there and keep using it. 
So I'm make a little tag on here and maybe do a little journaling on this card too. I'm using this little bit of bling because I have the bag of bling scraps on the table because I put some down there and some over there. So don't ask me about my design choices because, and you could say it with me now, I used it because it was on the table. I keep a pile of stuff over there. Of course, now I have a pile of stuff over there too. Paper over there, mostly material over there. Scraps over there. And I just like to use what's on the table. I like to keep a pile of stuff there. And use it up. This is my llama ribbon that I found one roll at the Dollar Tree and never saw another roll ever again. But if I ever see it, I'm going to buy some more because they're as cute as little tiny pom poms. Okay, I'm using some Fabri Tac hold this down and that's got to dry that's going to take a little while to dry and I just chose yellow and green because they're springy colors and on these pages here I've got the yellow and the yellow green and the pink over there and I just like to have fun and add little touches Okay, while those are drying, I'll let that dry before I journal on that card. I was working on another card last night while Mr. Possum was asleep, so I didn't record. And this is not anything you will ever learn in any nature journaling class, ever. Guaranteed, this is a Possum Patty exclusive. This is junk nature journaling. No, this is nature junk journaling, whichever way. But I saw a butterfly. So this would be May 2nd. I saw a very large yellow swallowtail butterfly in the front yard. So I put the date and the temperature, the weather mostly sunny, what it was, cut out a picture, I made a little note there that it has a three to five and a half inch wingspan. It's pretty big. Here's my little ruler. Here's my little ruler. These tiger swallowtails can be almost as big as the size of this ruler. So I'll put my thumb there. Beautiful big butterflies. And then this spring azure is also a beautiful blue butterfly, but it's tiny. This butterfly there is only like that big right there. So one butterfly is that big and the other one is like that big. Big difference, but they're both beautiful butterflies. So this was a sighting and I wrote my information and this was a different sighting. I saw this one on April 8th and on April 11th and I put the actual size and where I saw it, this was the front yard and this was on the lane. Both times it was on the lane. Now one thing you can do for nature journaling is to note behavior. So this blue butterfly, even if you don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. I saw a blue butterfly. Where was it? When was it? What did it do? That's very important. Behavior. It landed in the middle of the road and rubbed its wings together. Now I found a picture of the blue azure butterfly showing the underside of the wings and it's more like a camouflage color so if it closes its wings it's kind of camouflaged but it opens its wing it's a beautiful blue and I looked up the behavior and I, today with Google it's so easy to find out any information and I just googled rubbing wings together so 
I found out that the blue azure butterfly is in the hair streak butterfly family and that the males have little pheromone sacs on their wings and they rub their wings together and it disseminates this pheromone, this smell, and it attracts the females. So I put down here, hey ladies, because he was rubbing his wings together. Now I do have a trick to show you. If I can find my scraps, but maybe I threw them out. Did I clean off the desk? I think I did. Oh well, I wanted to show you the trick to, like when you cut out, oh, here's a picture. These are different swallowtails. So when you cut out a butterfly and you've got these little tiny antenna, what's the trick to cutting them out? And the trick is just to cut them off. Cut around the butterfly and just cut that part off. And also, if there's some little skinny legs, just cut them off. And then look back at the picture and take a pen. I used a Micron a 05, and this is kind of a brownish color. And I drew them back in. So easy, so easy, so easy, because I don't like to fuss with that little tiny bit of cutting. Okay, now for the elephant in the room. Look at this big flower sitting here. You will never, ever see this in any nature journal. I bought these the other day at the Dollar Tree. I don't know why. They just spoke to me. Take me home. Take me home. And they were pink and they were purple and they were flowers. And I said, okay, I'll bring you home. And what I did is I took off the clip. See, there are these little alligator clips. So I took off the clip and then I cut off this green part here. I cut that off and then I trimmed. There's a little stem in there. And I trimmed off that little stem that's in there. And then I just glued all these layers back together again and stuck it right there. I could have changed the middle out, but I kind of like this little fuzzy middle, so I left that on there. And I just plopped it in the middle of the page because I like it, and it makes me happy. And you should do what makes you happy. Even if you're nature journaling, you should do what makes you happy. So here's my happy butterfly page, and I love the way it came out with my great big fake flower in the middle. But I have all my journaling about butterfly sightings and butterfly behavior and I have a little bit of information and you don't need a lot of information and you don't even need to know a lot about butterflies to put them in your journal. All these pictures were cut out of a book. I have a couple little books here. This is one of them. Butterfly Gardens. I think I got this at a tag sale somewhere. and It's got great pictures in it. And I just cut out the picture and I pasted them down on a background. And that was it. So this is one nature journaling page. And this is the other nature journaling page. But for this one, I did make a pocket. And of course, you will not see fiddlehead ferns made with yarn and felt in any other nature journaling. And you usually will not see bling and plastic butterflies and scrubby yarn. So I'm going to just let these dry. Fabri-Tac takes a little while to dry. This one has the hay scented fern. And when that's dry, I'm going to be sticking that in the pocket like that. And then I'm going to journal about the horsetail that I saw. And I'm going to stick that in the pocket like that. And I'll have two more nature journaling pages done. So thanks for coming along today, and happy nature junk journaling, or junk nature journaling. Bye-bye now.